Hey fun fans, Nick here, and similar to the past couple years, we're going to be creating a few videos throughout the build season regarding team updates and some important Q&A questions and answers that could prove to be important for your team to monitor throughout the build season. Today, we're going to be taking a look at team updates 00, 01, and 02 that have been released over the past week and highlight some important notes for your teams on this episode of FRC Updates Now. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Kettering University's cutting-edge programs and their experiential co-op model seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds, offering hands-on, feature-focused learning that empowers students to pursue new ideas and inspires other institutions to follow their lead. Don't just be ahead of the curve, create the curve. Get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad-free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the join button below to get started. All right, kicking us off here with Team Update 00. Um, I've been a big fan uh, recently, especially um, the past couple of years. I believe this is either the second or third year that FIRST has done this. Um, in relation to kind of creating a team update right at the beginning of the season, showcasing, you know, what has changed essentially from the previous game to this year's game, or might essentially be, you know, a holistic change across the program. So, and that's been, you know, within the program for multiple years, and now we're seeing an update to that. And I think, uh, you know, releasing team update 00 has been a big help for that. And I believe this was released on kickoff. So we're going to jump in here a little bit. Um, you know, the, this document is a really good way um, to look at, you know, changes to evergreen content, um, you know, terminology, stuff like that, that could possibly change from previous years that are moving to this year. Um, starting off with uh, section six, game details, um, that the uh, table 6.3 rule violation has been updated um, and verbal warning added. So be sure to take a look at um, that table that, you know, has been previously used, but, you know, changed for this year and see what you can uh, see on how those certain rule violations are going to be played for this year. Um, and then they've also added yellow and red card application card application timing has been consolidated prior to qualification matches. That's a big one. So be sure to take a look at that as well. Um, I'm not going to go through line by line here, but a couple big ones that I think were important to add or some verbiage change. Uh, G303, uh, start your robots has changed. They've added a line. If a fix is a quick remedy, the match won't start until all requirements are met. If it's not a quick remedy, the robot will be disabled. And at the discretion of the head referee, must be reinspected. Um, if a robot not comply with part B or C participates, the team is using a red card. So I like the fact that I have the caveat in here. You know, if, if, if a quick fix is able to be used and the match, you know, won't start until all the requirements are met. I like the fact that they added in there, you know, there is an opportunity. If it's a quick remedy to solve it, you know, quickly. Um, and, you know, you can obviously change that moving forward for your match and hopefully be able to uh, make that respective match. Um, they added um, notice. I thought the big thing, too, that they changed this year was they uh, the nomenclature for fouls has changed. So you know, rather than it being a foul and a tech foul, it's now minor foul or major foul. Um, I think that kind of delineates it between, um, you know, the two fouls and that that's the choice that first has, you know, chosen to move through this year. Um, big thing for me, jumping into robot construction rules, robot, per robot perimeter must be fixed. That's pretty, um, you know, it, it, that's updated to a more realistic robot, what to expect. Uh, the frame perimeter is still the same this year, 120 inches all the way around. But the big one that a lot of teams, um, you know, hopefully would have caught by now, but uh, the robot weight limit has reduced from 125 to 115. Um, obviously, throughout this year's game, um, it's been incredibly, you know, as we're, you know, teams are strategizing and diving on what they want to do with the robot. Um, it's a relatively complicated game and a lot to do in, you know, um, a small area. So trying to make sure that you're within weight there is going to be big. So make sure that if you haven't already, robot weight limit um, is 15 pounds. Be sure to take a look into that. Um, yeah, it's been announced previously, but a lot of the allowable motors, Kraken X44s have been added to the table, um, as well as some server requirements change. So if your team is interested in using either of those, be sure to take a look at that. Um, they've also added uh, the Cores 40 and the Town FXS and the Thrifty Nova motor controllers to be able to be legally used. Um, and also added the CTRE PDP 2.0. So be sure to take a look into that if your team is interested in using that for uh, your robot. Uh, they added a line to inspection eligibility if prior to the start of the match, the team is disqualified and not eligible to participate in the match. If after the match, the team receives a red card and the match may be replayed per T201. So I thought that was interesting. Be sure to take a look at that as well. If you hadn't heard before, there has been an update to align selections for this coming year. I'm not going to go too much into detail, but I believe we talked about it on one of my roundup shows over the summer with Connor. Um, but if you haven't had a chance, be sure to take a look into the align selection process um, announced in the link blog. 
And then as well as for district and regional tournaments, a big one over the summer was the release of the uh, point system for regional teams advancing. So be sure to take a look at that in that blog. And they've also added some a section related to um, the balance of divisions needed for accessible seating between divisions. Um, and that's going to be the end of Team Update 00. So jumping to Team Update 1. Um, hopefully you've been caught up to this by now, but first I wanted to put out there that they have noticed that there's been some algae variances that they actually reply to in Team Update 2. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that. Um, they've noted some changes to the team field, team field versions and the field drawing kits um, within that. And then don't forget um, the team replacement part system um, you know, is out there, but there was an issue noticed causing some veteran teams to not see any items in the season specific box. So if you ran into that issue when you're trying to place that, try again. And if you still have issues, be sure to reach out to FRC parts at firstinspires.org. Um, if your English is not your first official language, they do have some translated manuals this year as they have in the past, uh, previous year. So be sure to take a look into that. Uh, there's also been an update to the arena layout and marking diagrams that might be useful if your team is trying to mark out your practice fields. So be sure to take a look into that. And they've also adjusted to include the coral station area within the Alliance area to show precisely where the corals are staged. And they added essentially, uh, this diagram here. Uh, jumping down into the cage, some clarification on dimensions. Um, and they added that only one curl can be scored per branch, which was implied, but noted that, you know, they added that important to add. Um, some highlighter on major matter fouls, some, you know, cleanup error, cleanup compared to the foul and tech fouls. And then jumping down to um, bumper construction, they added the, the line cross section and wanted to clarify um, another big one that has changed over the previous years that I didn't get to highlight in Team Update 00, but uh, there's been a pretty significant change related to bumpers. Um, you know, there is no longer the required to use pool noodle. You're kind of allowed to use any foam that you want along with any backer. Um, and then the bumper uh, weight is actually, you know, the rather than the bumper weight being specified, it's now the overall uh, robot weight with bumpers. So I know we listed the robot cannot be more than 115 pounds, but the overall robot, um, has a weight of, it's either 130 or 135. Don't call me on that. I'm not percent sure, but it's in that range. I believe it's 130 if I remember correctly. Um, but theoretically, if you built a 110 pound robot, you could have 20 pound bumpers to be more constructually or, um, strategic if you ever thought that way. So be sure to take a look into, uh, that as well as that's another big update. Um, they also added a, um, additional ex example was added for the, uh, fill bumper corner section. So they've kind of changed on how, um, the padding can be wrapped around the corner, so be sure to take a look into um, this and what that looks like. Um, more updates to line selection, as I noted, be sure to take a look into the line selection if you haven't had a chance. And then for district championship eligibility, we've had uh, the Pacific Northwest um, district get an additional five teams, and the Peachtree District State Championship decreased to 45 uh, for the teams that are eligible at the capacity. And then for first Mid-Atlantic, we had a decrease um, in first impact award winners um, at their to qualify for the championship. And that is the end of team update one. So jumping into team update two that is the uh, most recently came out, um, the algae inflation spec has been updated. This is a big one. Um, so if you have not had the opportunity um, you know, about algae inflation and what that looks like, please look at the blog, take a look at it. Um, and you know, be sure to make sure that you are inflating your algae to the correct dimensions. Um, first did note that there were essentially two different types of algae that um, came out of the manufacturer. So be sure to take a look at the linked blog linked here that goes into detail. Um, Colin and the FRC team have done a really good job about being super transparent um, with the FRC community and making sure that the necessary um, you know, information is out there and what teams need to do for that. Um, they noted that the full drawing package and the Rescape specific drawings have been updated to adjust the algae sizing. So please, please, please make sure. I know we're getting into that phase of the build season where teams are starting to design um, for you know specific uh, mechanisms and whatnot and using a lot of that base geometry. Be sure to take a look into the algae size and what that looks like for your team and your robot to make sure that you are um, evaluating the correct dimensions. Um, and as stated down here, this kind of gives you the update of the sizing gauge. So rather than being uh, between 15 and a half, it's now 16 and 16 and a half. Um, and just referencing the updated uh, dimensions, the algae and J were both placed on a flat surface and the algae will be inflated with the valve sticking up vertically. So that the seam is perpendicular to the large hole in the jig. Um, I would recommend that if possible, um, try to follow this process. So that way your team can design to an algae that is gonna be what it is specced out to be on the field.
Um, and this is an example of what the algae inflation jig looks like. Section 6.2, they added a uh, paragraph stating if an alliance does not have at least human players, one of the alliance's teams must substitute a student technician as a human player to be compliant uh, with Section 6.3.1 for that match only. In this case, the head referee must be notified. All human play rules now apply to this drive team member, and the drive team members no longer are considered a technician for the match. So, for example, um, if you go to a uh, – if you're in a – you know, qualification match and one of your alliance members does not have a human player. So they only have a driver and an operator. Um, in this case, one of the alliance's teams members must substitute one of their technicians. So if uh, team A doesn't have a human player, but team B does, and they also have a technician, that team B's technician can now possibly be the, the human player for that match. Uh, so it's important to make sure to follow that process and see what that looks like um, to make sure that you are in accordance with the rules. Uh, they added a note of at least two algae are scored in each of the alliance's processors. All teams are in one cooperation point, uh, just clarifying the cooperation bonus. Um, and then some over, other overall logistics. One of the big things, probably the biggest update, um, you know, in my opinion, in these past couple of updates, is the addition of G435. The processor area has a storage limit. Human players may not store more than four algae in the processor area, up to three in the holders on top of the processor, and no more than one at the end of the processor exit ramp. Human players making a good faith effort to immediately enter algae is an exception of this rule. And a violation of this rule is a major, major foul per additional algae. So this is essentially saying, understood that the processor can only hold so many um, algae. If um, it was not directly called at the beginning of the year and there was some discussion on Chief Delphi about teams possibly not emptying their processor and only allowing the storage limit, which is essentially, I believe, uh, four or five, and then essentially rendering the processor to not be accessible to the alliance because it was full. So I'm glad that first added the rule here, essentially saying, you know, human players got to make a good faith effort to, you know, clean up the algae in the processor and get it removed and either score it or move it out of the way. So that way the processor um, is still usable for those teams. Uh, they added in practice areas. Uh, line of first is providing a small set of production run April tags for the practice field. Tags provided for the 2025 practice field will include tags 1, 3, 5, and 6. Teams that wish to use other April tag IDs for the practice fields may print copies of other tags to bring them with them to events. So if your team is focusing on April tags and you want to make sure that you have the ability to use those April tags at competition on the practice field, um, these are the tags that are going to be provided. If you need other tags, I recommend possibly printing those ahead of time or making a game plan so that way your team is prepared for your event and that way you'll be able to be successful. That's it for this FRC Updates Now video for Teams Update 0001 and 02. We'll be making another video here shortly once we get 3, 4, and 5 and whatever that looks like, as well as bringing in some Q&A questions next time. To, that might be important for your team to know as you're designing, um, starting to fabricate, and actually building your robots. Until next time, fun fans, thanks. Kettering University's cutting-edge programs and their experiential co-op model seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds, offering hands-on, feature-focused learning that empowers students to pursue new ideas and inspires other institutions to follow their lead. Don't just be ahead of the curve, create the curve. Get more information at kettering.edu first.